So you want a garden in Florida and you've been thinking, what type of garden should I have? Whether you're a new gardener or an expert gardener, but you're new to Florida or your gardener has made some mistakes and just want to learn more. Well, today on Wild Florida, we're going to talk about the best types of gardens for Florida. <laughs> I'm Jacqueline, the Wild Floridian, and welcome to my series on gardening in Florida. Whether you're trying to figure out the best plants for Florida or the crazy seasons, this series focuses on the unique way that we garden here in Florida. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss any of it, go ahead and click on this card right here, or you can wait till the end and a card will appear in one of these four corners. Okay, let's get into it. You've been wondering what type of garden should you have here in Florida? And we're gonna go over four types and then I'm gonna tell you the best type at the end. When it comes to starting with gardens in Florida, let's start first with our name, Florida. It means land of flowers and you should be thinking about starting a flower garden. Nothing brings movement and color and beauty to your yard like a flower garden. Think low to high, think native, think exotic. You can do all of these things and bring in such a rich tapestry to your yard. And think about things like wildflowers, roses, or even flowering trees. Things like tababuyas and jacarandas and southern magnolias and golden shower and ground poncianas and of course the tropical plumeria. When it comes to starting a garden in Florida, think about flowers first. And now that you have all those flowers in your yard, you'll start to see bees and moths and of course butterflies all throughout your yard and you want more. And nothing's gonna bring in more butterflies than a butterfly garden. Florida has over 50 native butterflies and over 180 species that visit our state throughout the year. So, but there's a little bit more than just flowers that they need because flowers really just bring in food for them, but they need water and shelter and somewhere to put their babies. So in order to make it a butterfly garden, you need to add two things and then get rid of one thing. So what you wanna do is you wanna first off add host plants. Host plants like things like frog fruit, milkweed, oaks, passion vines, all of these are the hosts for the eggs and then the caterpillars that will become butterflies. So besides having that food, you've got to give them a place for those babies. The second thing that you're going to want to add to your yard is a water source. They're thirsty, they got to drink. So make sure that you have some moving water because if it's not moving water, you'll have a different type of bug in your yard, mosquitoes. We don't need lots of those guys. So have some bubbling brooks, some little waterfalls, and some sort of water feature for your butterflies to drink from. And the third thing, which is a thing you want to get rid of, that is pesticides. See, if you're spraying pesticides around your host plants for those baby little caterpillars, well, the plant absorbs it and your caterpillars eat it and then they die. So what you want to do, create host plants, get water in the area and then get rid of the pesticides so you don't kill off your baby butterflies. But enough about feeding caterpillars and butterflies. What about you? What about your family? Have you ever thought about number three, having a food garden? And you may have been thinking more in the box, you know, like the vegetable box garden. And that is something you can do. I mean, here in Florida, we are the number one producer for berries during the winter time. We produce tons of tomatoes and other plants throughout the winter. Actually, after tourism, our number one, number two economic driver for the state is agriculture. We are great at growing food here and you can do the same thing in your yard. And I highly recommend going beyond just your traditional vegetables and getting some crops that put a ton of food in your yard. Things like mulberries and bananas and papayas and sweet potatoes, things that they can't grow up north, but we can grow a lot of down here in Florida. But maybe you're thinking you wanna go a little bit further. You have more aspirational, you wanna help with conservation for the state, and you're thinking about creating a wildlife garden. And that is a great idea because yes, you could create food for your family. Yes, you could just worry about butterflies, but in a wildlife garden, you're thinking broader. You're thinking about the birds and the squirrels and the lizards and so many other animals that come to the state. See, Florida is number 26 in size across the United States, but it is number three in biodiversity. That means every square foot that you convert into a wildlife sanctuary, has a huge impact on our wildlife and conservation efforts. You can be part of what we call the wildlife corridor, which is houses using their yards so that birds and other animals can make their way as they migrate north to south, or they can spend the whole year round. 
So some things just like with the butterflies that you want to consider adding is of course they need food, shelter, and water. So food, think about plants that not just for butterflies that are host plants, but also other plants, things like blueberry shrubs or marl berries, beauty berries. There are a ton of plants that they can eat um, and <laughs> we could go on all day. Places for them to shelter, areas in your yard that you aren't going and doing high maintenance and management to, but also considering leaving things like dead stumps in the yard so that things like some of our native pollinating bees can go and eat into the dead wood, uh, woodpeckers will live in dead trees, all sorts of things like that. And of course, again, creating a water source. Now everyone can't get a water source, but if you're gonna have one, make sure, like I said, with the butterfly garden, it needs to be moving water because let's not expand the habitat of the mosquitoes. I mean, they're good for bats, but there's plenty. <laughs> and the best type of garden for Florida? Well, do it all. Have a potpourri garden and that's number five. Do a wildlife garden, butterfly, have wildflowers, exotics, have it all in your yard. It is my favorite way to go and do things. That's what I do in my yard. And you can do some really fun things like forget traditional companion planting with basil and tomatoes. Why not do something more fun? Have tomatoes with firebush. I did some lately and my tomatoes are doing awesome with it because that firebush is creating a habitat for a lot of animals that eat the pests that are on my tomatoes. So it's a win for them, it's a win for me, and we're all happier. And now that you picked out your type of garden, you've probably been thinking, but what are the seasons here? I don't know when to plant things, when to harvest things, why won't the flowers grow when I plant them? This is just a mess. And that's gonna be our next episode. We're gonna talk about the best season for gardening in Florida. So to make sure you don't miss it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notification. New videos each week on Friday, and sometimes a bonus on Sunday. And I'll see you soon, bye.